Hi, I'm Babs, and I'm going to be speaking um, on the online prosperity show. So please join us so you can hear all about um, some photography tips and how you can make your online presence better um, through your Instagram photos or online photos. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Babs. Babs, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing? Fantastic. Now, Beth Brown is actually a renowned photographer. She goes around places taking people's um, photos and actually creating a story out of that. Now, in this world of social media where a picture speaks a thousand um, words, we took some time with Beth just to find out what should we do to enhance our photography and to also stand out in social media. Thank you so much, Beth, uh, for, uh, for, for joining us today, right? Yes, thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. I appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Now, I'm going to be calling you Babs because that's, that's, that's your stage name, right? Can you, can you just tell yes. us one thing about photography that really excites you? Um, the thing that I love about photography is people. So um, sometimes I do dabble in still life, like today I was just taking photos of flowers, but mostly if my photos don't have people in them, somehow I'm not happy with them. So I, I like people and that is, um, that's what I like. It gives me access to people, I think. Um, their stories, their lives, and, and just finding out interesting things. You learn so much working with people. Yeah, that's Great what stuff. I love about it. You did mention that people really do make the best compositions. Now, how For often me. do you find that those people realize how good they look in the photos? Well, it depends. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of clients who don't like themselves in photos and don't really have self-confidence. And in fact, actually, one time I had a client hire me to photograph um, several uh, female friends of hers because she felt that they needed um, to see themselves differently. So uh, it can be really empowering and um, it takes a little coaching sometimes to get the person to be comfortable um, because everyone is beautiful. Usually, you know, there's the inner beauty and then there's the outer beauty and some people have both. Um, so, but everyone has their own beauty and it's just a matter of, um, getting that person to believe in that beauty in themselves. And then once they start to feel that confidence that, that they're more than what they thought that they are, um, then usually they end up being like selfie kings or queens. <laughs> um, so it can really change, uh, how someone sees themselves. Just a photo session great stuff that's where i really wanted to take us the empowering part of you know seeing yourself frozen in time and you are yeah. ushering that to them as as a gift that they get to keep for themselves how does that make you feel when you see that smile on somebody when they didn't recognize that this is them and this is exactly who they are trying not to see how does that do what does that do to you as a person it makes me smile. Um, it's it's fun. It's a it's a challenge because some people are easier to work with than others, and to get them to believe in themselves. But yeah, it it makes it worth it. Um, so I, I I'm just happy. Great stuff. Yeah, it's a blessing. Great stuff. One happy person in the world makes the world a better place, and I really appreciate you for bringing that out there. Now let's see you know, somebody is starting a business and they're going out there. Um, they want to have a few headshots and they want to have, you know, styled photographs for their business. What should they do to enhance the look that would solidify their presence? And what sort of things would you encourage your um, people to do while you're taking photos with them? Um, preparation. That's, uh, that's pretty key. Um, what I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand is it takes preparation and a photo does not happen, um, 
the photos on my website, those photos I've usually worked with the person at least an hour, maybe, maybe two. Um, it's not going to happen in five minutes, but even the preparation, I've had people show up with dirty laundry, wrinkled laundry. You wouldn't believe what I've seen. <laughs> so, uh, you know, preparation, you can't just wake up the morning of your shoot and think, oh, yeah, I'll just use this dress or this, this shirt or this tie because the tie might be too short. The shirt yeah. might have a stain on it. Um, so you really have to kind of plan out in advance, and it really depends on the look that you're trying to get. Um, on what you really do need to prepare. Um, if you're really going all out and you're really trying to like rebrand yourself and build a website, you might want to get a stylist, um, a makeup artist. You know, you you might need. You sh I would recommend you consider using a team for that. But then, if it's just something that's more fun and art based, and it doesn't have to have like perfect polish perfection, but it's just you know, more of a raw look, then you still want to take the time to prepare your outfit, but maybe you don't need to get the stylist. Maybe you can style yourself, you know? Um, so it depends on, on what the, even what the person's talents are that is hi, who's hiring me. Because I have clients who can do their own makeup, but I also have clients who can't. Maybe they would need a makeup artist. So it depends. Um, but definitely preparation. You, no matter what you are doing, you need to prepare. Great stuff. I mean, you, you, do, you do raise a very valid point there. A lot of people just think you can just show up. There's a lot of behind the scenes. Like you've said, it takes hours yeah. to prepare for, for a shoot and stuff like that. What, how far are you willing to go to get the perfect photo? Um, I don't know that I've ever gotten the perfect photo. <laughs> Um, I mean, I have photos that I like that I've taken, but I sometimes look at my work and like, well, it could be better on my half, on my part. Um, but I will, I will work with the person. So, um, if I have to, I don't, have I ever done any reshoots? Not many. I haven't really done that many reshoots, but if I had to, I would reshoot if the person needed more time and things didn't come out. Um, initially, um, but I basically we'll take the time and if someone has booked an hour photo session, but it's just not there yet, I'll take the extra half hour to, you know, get the look or get the shot just right for what they need, um, and what they're looking for and not really charge them. That's probably bad on my, <laughs> my half, <laughs> but if I have to take extra time beyond what was initially planned, I will. Right. That's, that's pretty amazing. And, um, I've seen some of your work. It's, it's remarkable, especially the street, uh, beats there. Is it easier to work within a contained environment, like a studio space, or is it easier when the person is in his actual habitat or like in an open sort of environment, which, which one do you prefer the most or what, what works perfectly? Um, so my, my strength is outdoor with natural light. That is my strength. Um, I can do studio, it's not my favorite. Um, I think artificial light doesn't really appeal to me, so it's been hard for me to force myself to learn that. Um, but definitely, yeah, I will market myself as an urban photographer because I would much rather be on the street doing portrait of someone or their headshots outside using natural light in an environment than in a studio creating um, artificial. To me, it looks more artificial, but it's beautiful. And I know photographers who can do like amazing studio work, so I'm not trying to take away from that. Um, but I prefer outside with the natural light, and it's my strength too, because I think I love it more. Great stuff. All right, now we're living in a hyper content world where you gotta be constantly producing content, but at the end of the day, it's also very expensive to be hiring, you know, a photographer to follow you around unless you're Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, it's <laughs> what sort of, yeah. yeah, but we have now been blessed at this time of, of our time where you can just quickly snap a photo of yours on, um, you know, on, on your phone. What sort of, tips or tricks can you give to a budding entrepreneur who's on the fly 
what to do with maybe the lighting or since since they're outside how to take a really perfect photo using the, the iPhone camera um I would say backgrounds so you want to pay attention to what what your surroundings are um, you know the bathroom selfie yeah great bathrooms have great light but no one really wants to see the toilet or the sink <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> tacky that's my opinion um, but the lighting is great there um, so I would say just uh, choose a background that really kind of represents whatever you are out to however you're out to present yourself um, so that and you can play with different angles um, you know you know take multiple shots but you know right in front of you above behind to the side so play around because that's pretty much what I do when I'm gonna shoot is you know I'll play around with the angles that I photograph people at and um, you know to kind of figure out where the lighting is best on you you can if you're taking a selfie on your cell phone you know turn around and hold the the camera the cell phone up to you so you can see as you're turning which which way the light would best flatter your face so okay. you play around yeah Great stuff. This is this is all amazing tricks because as we are going around as business people, we never really consider these things. <clears throat> okay, so I so um, I also heard uh, from a a photographer once that the side closest to the camera looks bigger. Is that is that a fact or what are the tricks that you can give to to people to make sure that you know, when they're playing with the angles and their camera, it could it could perfectly give them a perfect shot for them. Like, well, yeah, I'm. I mean, that makes sense. If something's, if you're closer to something, it's going to look bigger. Like, you know, you're in an airplane; things look really tiny. Right. So, if you whatever side this the camera or the cell phone is will make that side of your face or will make it look bigger. Okay, let me, t tell me something. When you um not taking photographs, what else is happening in your life? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm also a teacher. Right. Um, I teach high school. I, it's just not on my marketing, you know, because uh, I market myself as a photographer. But I am a teacher. Um, so I teach English to speakers of other languages. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, is that because of your background and after you speak with them? Oh, wait, how, how does that work? Um, no, the, <laughs> the honest answer is that I wanted summer vacations again. <laughs> ah, okay. So, yeah, I graduated college and I went to the real world and I was like, this is not working. Um, I need more than two weeks off. And I do, you know, even in photography, I like helping people. I like people um, to have better lives. You know, when I die, that's what I want. I want people to somehow be able to have improved their life because of something that I've put into them. So it fit with, you know, kind of how I wanted to live my life and the type of legacy that I would want to leave behind. So, um, and it fit with the idea of really wanting more freedom to just be able to do the things that I love. Um, so that's how I ended up being a teacher. Oh, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's very selfless in as much as you're not doing this for yourself. You're doing it to help other people really have a life that's worth living. And the fact that you also take photographs and give people back their self-esteem and their self-worth and self-confidence, that's a really big legacy that you're going to leave them. All right. And I can't wait to see all of that coming through. No, obviously maybe somebody would have seen and watch this video today and thought maybe they needed to get in touch with you Beth what's the best way of um, getting a hold of you oh they can probably the easiest way would be through Instagram at Babs eyes pics so B A B S E Y E S P I X great yeah Babs is my initials actually ah, yeah great stuff <laughs> all right I will yeah. be putting all of that um, in a in the in the comments below all right so thank you so much babs for chilling in with us today and you know having this wonderful time to tell us exactly what it entails to get the perfect shot so that you actually get those likes on instagram <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It was it was fun meeting you, sort of, kind of meeting you virtually. Great yeah. stuff. All right. And like you say, there's a lot of preparation that goes on to taking the perfect shot and a photo takes, um, a, a photograph is worth a thousand words. So go out there and be snappy, happy, and make sure you're doing it right so that you're representing yourself and also your business in the right light. This has been Prosper and thank you so much, Bob, for tuning in. Um, subscribe to this channel and hopefully we'll check you out on the next episode of the Online Prosperity Show. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. All right, thank you, you too, thank you. Great stuff. Hi, I am Babs of Babs Photography and this is the Online Prosperity Show. And, oh God, can I start over? No. <laughs> no! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!